All right, Keith, we're recording. Um, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, uh, my name is Keith Haynes. I am currently um, a lecturer in uh, the CMCI department at CU Boulder. Um, right now I'm teaching a class called um, Performance uh, Media Practices. Um, I'm also teaching at um, a studio here in Longmont, Colorado, uh, teaching dance um, to studios. And I'm also rehearsing for um, two online festivals that, that are going on um, in the next month or so. Nice. Oh my gosh, that is great. Because um, I know, I know you. Thank you for sharing that. First, I should back up a little bit. Um, and um, I know you through your dance um, and um, through this very beautiful, provocative and kind of boundary pushing um, work that you're doing um, and very honest work, too. And um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm wondering um, if you could talk a little bit about that and also maybe how you're balancing um, you know, the academic world with this um, very active um, uh, personal life and dance as well. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So you said the first one, so I'm just talking about my work in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my work in general is racial and politically charged. Um, I feel like in a, in a lot of ways that, that sometimes when I look at my work, it's like it's just the same record playing over and over again. But um, I can't remember who said this, but they, uh, they said like art uh, mimics life. Mm -hmm. And since uh, moving to Colorado now four years, um, I feel like a lot of my work ha has been a lot of racial and political things. I mean, 2016, like looking back was a really traumatic year. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't realize it until I was like looking at my work and I was like talking to one of my friends about when I started the grad program, I was like, we were triggered. There was, you know, there were black men dying every, every week. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like once or twice, you know, um, or every two weeks or so. And that was, that was that was tough, especially moving to a place um, like Colorado, Boulder, Colorado, that is um, a lot more heavily populated by white people than, than what I, you know, normally experience in Houston, Texas. So, um, so that was a culture shock. So then all these things started starting to happen, and like walking in the class and my and you know my friends um, saying like, "There's another one," and, you know, and yeah. stuff like that happening. The pole shooting I think happened that same year. Um, there was a thing with the clowns randomly. I was running around like crazy all over the country. Um, mm -hmm. The election happened in 2016. So I feel like that was kind of the start of things kind of shifting for me artistically, um, knowingly and unknowingly. Sometimes I would approach work. I'm like, I'm approaching work in a non-political and racial way, but somehow the work always came back around to that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a lot of my work is racially and politically charged, but what I try to do, I think I'm an abstractionist as a choreographer. Mm -hmm. um, so when I start to conceive work, it, I see it through the racial and political lens, but how sometimes I, it comes to fruition, um, it doesn't necessarily look that way. So instead of it being like, oh, this is, this is a, um, a, a piece about the protest that I try to sift through and like, understand what it is what is it about let's say the protest that is drawing to you. maybe it is the way in which people gather maybe it's a sense of camaraderie maybe it's a sense of safety from the you know from the from the um outside in or you know whatever it is so then i try to fixate on that and then i create my works based upon that um so yeah that's that's <laughs> that's a kind of an overview a long overview of yeah. of my work and and um the way in which i i create um and I see, sorry, I forgot what the second question was. That's okay. Like these things are pretty free form and my brain, I always say my brain's like a, a pinball machine with teleportation stations. Yes. So like if we don't answer all the questions, I don't have any set questions because I know we'll, we'll get around to them, you yeah. know? Um, and I just like, I'm really, um, I, I was very struck by your work when I saw it. Um, last year, and I think the year before too, at Counterpaths Unseen Festival. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I think that the um, the um, dialogue that we need to be having about um, uh, the the threat against black bodies constantly does come through. Yeah. Um, and I just remember, um, like, I just keep seeing this picture of like. Um, it was the end of one of your performances, I think, last year, where you were running, like, in, you know, running in place, but it was very obvious that you were running, and the running and the breathing becomes more and more jagged, and um, everyone is um, kind of cinched in really close, um, and, and, and watching um, this performance of, like, 
um, I mean, I'm interpreting it obviously right now, but like this, this performance um, that's of, of like showing pain and showing, um, trying to strive against all odds and um, like just being dogged at the end. And um, it was, I just remember it being so incredibly powerful and I was like, please do this all the time. Like, I mean, and, and I know for us, um, uh, it feels like, you know, this record that we're playing over and over and over yeah. again that some people are starting to finally hear um, and hopefully it doesn't go out of their left ear, um, you know, in the next few months or whatever. Um, and, the, um, and that's what sucks about it is like, uh, it, I feel like that message has to keep going and keep going until, until we don't have to, to repeat it anymore. Um, yeah. which is really tiring <laughs> yeah. among other things. Yeah. It, it can, it can be really, really, really tiring. And it's funny you say, you say that because in a lot of way, that's um, how I thought I approached my work. I always thought mm -hmm. I approached my work by, I'm going to say something and you have got to listen. Yeah. Um, and in a lot of ways, I've tried to push against that. In a lot of ways, I, I've created pieces where I'm like, I'm not going to be the aggressive black man. I'm not going to be the confrontational black man. And that's why I think where the abstraction started to come in a lot more. I was like, well, how, how does this not be confrontational? But one thing that struck okay. me with what she was saying was that um, someone had mentioned to me that in a lot of ways, when we create these pieces and present these pieces, they're not necessarily like, oh, listen to what I have to say, but a form of healing yeah. for us. And that brought new life to me. I, it, I, it kind of hit me like a like a brick wall and I was like sitting on a Zoom call like, whoa. And I, and I hadn't realized like in a lot of ways that when I do perform my, my work, it is exhausting, but there is a sense of healing, a shedding, um, even if that shedding is just like a fear or whatever it is. So like when the person said that, I was like, healing, that that totally makes sense. So, so in a lot of ways, um, um, it's, it, is, it doesn't feel like I'm reperforming my trauma for a white audience, but right. you have the ability to experience my healing. But my right. healing may look and sound like a message about racism to you, but maybe it's a sense of healing and shedding for me. Thank you for that point. Um, and that, I think that's really super important. It, it actually reminds me of a lot of Amir George's work, um, the filmmaker um, that we saw a lot, um, and about how often um, some kind of ritual will appear in his films. I um, mean, the thing about the rituals that appear are, um, you know, a lot of times they are rituals like in the church or in voodoo or um, other sp spaces where um, these places are very insular and very protected. Mm -hmm. um, and so you suddenly the audience, the captured audience um, is invited into the space, but they don't get to know all the rules of that space. Something's be being performed that they get to see this time um, and take what they will um, and hope, you know, hopefully some other things. So th that's what that reminded me of is just like, they're not completely pr privy to that space, but they get a view of it. Um, and it is a privilege. Um, yeah. And there are still things that are that are kept for the people on the other side. Um, and so, and that reminds me too of just like the abstractness of um, like um, of your work. And I was wondering if you talk about that more, because I know like for me, and I'm having these conversations more, I'm feeling more brave about it. I mean, I'm obviously light skinned, a mixed race. Um, my, you know, I got like certain features that um, privilege me in, in certain ways. And um, um, that, that this has been a continually, continual journey of growth for me and understanding as well, um, because I didn't always understand it, but just like um, the, part that I'm trying to get to is like um, when I started to realize that it had something to do with race I um, I knew that I could be racially ambiguous and so my choice at the time was to become um, as ambiguous as possible um, so that people wouldn't fuck with me right okay. um, and um, so like you mentioned like stepping into this place of abstractness so that you don't um, I mean really so that you're not performing other like this emotional labor that we're always talking about that is very um, tiring for us. Yeah. I was wondering if you could talk about that. 
Hmm. <clears throat> um, I think that in a lot of, I'll try to say this in two ways. Hopefully it doesn't come out as four. Um, <laughs> but I guess the, the first way I would explain the, the reasoning for my abstraction is because I, mm. a lot, when I looked at my work, I felt that my work looked redundant. And I, and I didn't okay. want to typecast myself as, oh, the guy who makes racial dances. And okay. even so, that's fine. And that's great. Um, but, but, the, but, there was, but there was something else, I think, about my work that I was like, okay, but what? what is the, the one point you're trying to get at? So if you're looking at it and it's, you know, totality, it's race or it's politics. But like, mm -hmm. if we zoom in on the thing, what, what is the thing that we're zooming in on? Um, so if I use my thesis concert um, as an example, I was really looking at identity and opposing identities um, in one's body. I think you just spoke on your identity and things mm -hmm. like that. So like, my, you know, all these identities that we have um, that sometimes may clash with each other, ideologies that may clash with each other. Yeah. And then, how, and then how, how does our body remain a home, if that makes sense? But then in a lot of ways, how does, that, how does then do we carry ourselves if our ideal or sense of self is in opposition to society's sense or society's... Um, way of looking at us or putting us, you know, so, so then, so then either, either society puts us in this box or we put ourselves in like a metaphorical box and, and kind of um, restrict our, um, some of our identities to feel a sense or to pro pro uh, project a sense of normalcy. So I was looking at all of that in my thesis and I'm like, okay, but how do you put that into movement? So when I yeah. zone in on like, what that is, I was thinking regimentation and and militant because that that's what it made me feel that 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 we that when we conceal ourselves or or hide parts of ourselves to deem to be socially acceptable, um, politically acceptable, whatever it is, then then we're you know we're in this mold and, and it feels like we're, we're a machine and we just we move when we say somebody says to move or we breathe and somebody says breathe and we all move as one unit and there's no sense of individuality. So then that became the thing that I zoned into and the thing that became the whole like first section of the piece was, was, was these gestures that kept going and going and the, the, the entire cast like moving as one machine. Yeah. So and it took a while to get there. It took a, 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 about over, I, I think I started in the spring of 18 I think it took that entire semester it wasn't until the fall that that made sense so you know looking at, at looking at my work that's kind of how I start the process of my abstraction is mm -hmm. that I'm looking at the thing and I, and like, I don't like a big whiteboard and say okay this is all the evidence that we have and then I, then I there's like a red pin that zones into one thing and go okay that's the thing that could then explain this so then the regimentation and the and the repetitious nature of the movement strips the dancer of their individuality, strips the dancer of, of um, their identities, so then you become part of this blob, you know, and that's mm -hmm. representative of society, representative of me concealing or, or my identities colliding in certain ways. And then of course it breaks up into, that, into those type of things. So that's kind of how the, um, the abstraction came about. And also because I was like, I don't want my work to look the same so I was like yeah. what way can I change it and still get to race and still get to politics and still get to the black dancing body but without right. saying the black dancing body so, you, right. so you, you get understand the black dancing body through my exhaustion through right. through the, the you know the because I think the performance that you're, that you're speaking of I was like shirtless I had a do-rag on so I'm dancing I'm like flinging sweat all over the place you know like, <laughs> you're gonna understand the black dancing dancing body but before that that there was nothing really, I think because I was in process for about 20 minutes before I actually started the dance choreographed yeah. portion of it. So just that first portion, there was nothing to, to display that what I was doing was racially charged, but my black body on stage moving and convulsing in, in these certain ways, um, then to me started, started the process of, okay, this is where we're going. So when the choreographed part started with the video projection and all the um, news clippings, 
yeah. I had already kind of set the stage in terms of where we're going, but not saying this is about racism that you're or right. this is about my politi- politics, but you're seeing politics as soon as you walk in the door. I was thank you for that reminder because I was trying to remember like how I as an audience member felt invited in um, into the space and it was with a question right um, and with this very provocative like movement and there was repetition and very very like powerfully done and then the multimedia piece of it um, uh, helped to shape um, that interpretation even even more after that like it it kept adding layers and layers and layers um and um at that point when those i remember when those things um started happening in front of us on the screen too um it was like it, it it was the the captured audience isn't just sitting in the seat they are they are part of what is happening on stage um we're not apart from you as as the performer and dancer and i i think that was fucking incredible um, and so thank you for reminding me that because i i was trying to figure that out i was trying to remember um and uh and it it, it, it kind of sounds like too like you're taking things that are very hard to voice and very hard to put into words and um i mean obviously we feel them in in our bodies like in diff- varying degrees and so there are certain things that are like very universal and so like seeing a body going through this on stage um yeah it's like you can't help but be there too um and then all of a sudden it i don't know i don't know if you mean it as a ritual but for me it feels like a ritual because it's like this kind of transform formative thing that happens i don't know if you know you if you're doing that but i, I like it, it is ritualistic. Um, I, I think a, a lot of my work does does become ritualistic because it, it always mm-hmm. has some type of gesture thing that just gets repeated. So there's always a sense of like ritual and, um, but definitely the beginning of that was a ritual because I was like, mm-hmm. man, I have to do this fucking solo for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and I have to watch this really disturbing imagery Right. Hear all these things. Yeah. And I have to do it shirtless with a do rag um, and some basketball shorts on concrete in tennis shoes. And I was like, okay, great. And I think that was last year. So I had hip surgery last year. So that this was like six, oh, wow. seven months after hip surgery, maybe. So okay. I was like, all right. So we're getting back into it. So then the ritual then became me a way of hyping myself up, okay. a way of like, you know, so. It's, I'm not necessarily an emotional person, but sometimes watching the videos and things that I put, I put um, together really, I mean, they're people's lives. So of course, but they right. really like get to me. So, so then the, so then the, the beginning, at least for this time when I performed it um, was okay. You get yourself together, get yourself into the mindset, get yourself in, get your body ready for what you're about to do because it it is like, like the way it the 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 piece is constructed the how the choreography is strung together it's a fight and i am fighting at least really mm-hmm. attempting to fight for my life the entire time so like mm-hmm. what y'all saw in that 20 minutes i was able to invite you into the room and the, to to be able to start that conversation and and the and how this piece specifically uh, came about was is me pretty much watching television or or being on social media and just seeing these these instances over and over and over again just sitting in my living room like feeling completely helpless right but but feeling something a, a visceral reaction happening you know in my body um and i think the the best thing about counterpath is counterpath is such an intimate space yeah. that it was it was the perfect setting for a piece like this and because of the the size of the projection and my body dancing and how the seats were so close. I mean, I could have sat in somebody's lap in the first <laughs> room. So it was so confined. Now you come in into this process that is relatively private. I'm inviting you in. Mm-hmm. And then it just switches, you know, into this video to where, to where then now it feels like everybody's in their living room and we're all experiencing this thing and watching it together. So then we have to we have to figure out what the hell is going on and this black guy is just like twirling the hell around just you know doing stuff so then it, it it thrusts you in front of the tv and and i don't know 
I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it's if if it's in a way that you're embodying my experience or like a, in a forced way body embodying that experience. But yeah. that's what I think about. I think about like you could only experience it if you were literally sitting in the thing with me. And I feel like that's what I was trying to do. Um, now thinking about it, not what I was really like going intending to do, but now looking back at it, it's like that's probably what I was trying to do. And yeah. hopefully, as you were saying, accomplished. I hope that makes yeah. sense. I think I was rambling. I, I know <laughs> for me, I know for me, I got it. Um, and like, I hope other people in, in the audience did too. Um, Cause like, um, yeah, like obviously just hearing the stories and stuff, it's like, oh, that's so bad that that's happening. And then people go on, right? Yeah. Um, and, but how do we make it interactive in such a way where it is, you know, like you said, visceral, like yeah. you're feeling it. And once it's in your biology in your, in your body meets, um, like it, it's very difficult to extract that at that point, you can't just ignore it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, and, yeah. and you are in a room of 30 people. So you really can't ignore it. Everything is kind of put on right. the table. All at yeah. Once. Thank you for that. I like, I want you to lead a little more because like I did want to talk about that and I was, I've been really excited about that, that performance for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and I know you do work with um, other folks too. Um, and I mean, there are like a lot of dance troops in, in Colorado yeah. um, and y'all work differently. And yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> in, in terms of the work that we produce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are. Yeah, we do. We do. We do work differently. You know, I've I've uh, been a part of um, amazing companies and and been in the rooms with people who truly are there to like listen and, and things mm -hmm, of, that, of, mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, and I've um, yeah, it's funny because because my um, one of my really great best friends and also um, the co-director of the company that that we run, Viscosity Dance Collective, Vivian Kim. Mm -hmm. We, we have conversations all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm about to go into a rehearsal with her and we have conversations all the time about like how our work is a lot different than a lot of the work that's, that's produced in, um, in Colorado. And, yeah. and that, that's nothing, nothing against anyone, but, mm -hmm. but just our work sometimes is a lot, a lot different. And I know from many conversations that we've had, uh, Vivian and myself, that a lot of times we don't intend to go we don't intend going in for the piece to be political or to right. be, as I said, you know, earlier, but somehow it just kind of happens that way. Somehow it's, it's where, where we're focused on, you know, a certain gesture and how that gesture is repeated and how it then ricochets through the body. And then we add more bodies and then, and then how, then that connects to, you know, the riots. So, so, so there's always something that, yeah. that I think just leads us back there. So then, um, so that our work comes out really like racially and politically charged. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking at a lot of the work in Colorado, a lot of the work, a lot of work that I've been in myself, um, I think I think maybe there's a sense of um, physicality that that comes out of the work that I do, the work that um, Vivian and I do together. Yeah. Um, and, and physicality may not be the the right word, but there, but there's just a sense of, of ways in which we construct our work that's that's a lot um, different than um, the work that's produced um, in Colorado. And a lot of times, a lot of the the people who have uh, companies or are working in Colorado um, don't identify uh, as BIPOC. So yeah, there's a lot a lot of things, a lot of different experiences there as well. Cool. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Um, and I think, I think it's really important to know, um, cause, um, and, 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 um, I'm getting stunted a little bit, so I'm going to, I don't know, I don't know where to go next. <laughs> um, there, there are so many different places. Um, I did put a bullet point of mental health here. Mm. Um, and I, I think of that too, like, that was one of the questions I had, like, what were ways that you, um, were able to instill to be able to ground after, you know, that performance or similar performances. Because um, I've seen some performances by Viscosity and um, also um, Vivian Kim, and they're they're very powerful and highly charged. Um, and your full body is in it, you know. Yeah. Um, like, how do you 
how do you get get back onto your feet and into your mind in such a way where you can like move through the world after after that Ooh, um that's tough because I, I i'm not really sure i have an answer um the only thing the word that's coming to my mind right now is resilience um mm-hmm. perseverance and and those are i guess really generic global vocabulary words but but honestly in a lot of ways like as a as a black man um mm-hmm. as a person of color as a as a gay black man um in a lot of ways you just you have to pick yourself back up and you have yeah. to keep going um you have to keep going for yourself you have to keep going for your family your friend you have to keep going for the person who can't mm. keep going. um and and it and it's not like i think about those things every time I perform or after every time I perform, but, but there, there, there is a sense of, okay, that I got there. I have to keep going. There, there is a, I don't know, a yearning to keep going. Yeah. Um, that, that I'm not sure if I could even explain that. I'm not sure I even really think about it. It's just like, I, I lay whatever it is out on the floor, on the stage, uh, on the pavement, depending on where <laughs> um, I'm, um, I'm dancing and just let it, and let it simmer. Um, and after that, I feel like I, I have to really ground myself. I take breaths, I, I distance myself. I get really quiet before and after a work that, that is like really racially and politically charged, especially one that is physically demanding, which most mm-hmm. of them are. Like, I, I need about a good five minutes to just kind of exhale. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably the start of everything else because um, the last that performance I know was a lot. I I don't think I could have talked after that one because it went from the twenty minute invitation, yeah. uh, but process thing for myself into a ten to eleven minute solo, and then Vivian and I did a duet directly right after that. Right, I was dancing for like a straight thirty minutes, Ooh. so it, it was one of those things where like I got off stage and I was like, I can't feel my mouth like I just can't I could like it was just dry um so in, in a lot of ways I just I have to like just kind of sink into a hole for a second and just breathe yeah. um there have been many many of performances that um I have to like just go away because I, I, I'll lose it if I see someone I'll lose it um there have been times that I, that I have just like lost it completely so it's just a way for me to just kind of um ground myself again and, and bring myself back to bring myself back because yeah. sometimes, you know, when I perform, I just kind of transform myself into another world. So it's, it's a way of like just bringing myself back and you got to keep going. So I just like breathe, exhale and just let's go. Awesome. Thank yeah. you for that. So it's, it's not, it's not really, it's not anything fancy. I don't have any tips or tricks. It's, it's just like, okay, this is life. Here we go. Keep yeah. going. That's an I and I think I like that you bring up the word res- resiliency, um, and I also am thinking too about like just how, um, how often you don't necessarily mean or maybe not even want the work to be political, and then it ends up being political. Is that because of the audience? Huh. You know, I, I'm not sure. It, it could be. Mm-hmm. Um, because I have, I don't think I've ever really performed in front of like a predominantly mm-hmm. black audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm just like racing through memories right now trying to think. I don't think I, I have because in a lot of ways, when I see other people of color on stage and, and a, a lot of times I don't s- like necessarily see things that are politically or racially charged unless like you know the work is saying that like okay. in, in terms of you know uh, a person of color um, being on the concert stage is political because we're people of color around the concert stage but when I watch someone I don't necessarily I don't think I necessarily think um it is political because in 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 terms of like 
our skin color, whatever it is, it's, there's a relation there. So maybe, I'm not sure that when um, non-black people see my work or non-people of color see my work, um, in terms of even when I'm, not, when I'm going for something that is not racially charged, it may come off racially charged because I'm a black man on the concert stage. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm a black man with his shirt off, <laughs> you know, or, you know, something. So it's, it's, it's um, I think I, I'm, it's political, it can be political depending on um, who the audience is. So mm -hmm. I'm really not sure I haven't taken any data or, re or really have <laughs> much to compare it to because I think most of my audiences have been predominantly white. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see, I can see how that, how it can be, um, how it can be political for some people, even not, even though I'm not going for political, I can see how yeah. that can be, yeah. And like, who are you dancing for? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, I dance for my mom. Really? I, I do. I don't think she knows this and I don't think she does. I dance for my mom. Um, my mom is an artist and she always wants to be, she, she used to say when I was younger, she's like, I wanted to be, I wanted to be the next Picasso. When uh, oh. she used to tell me that when she was, uh, when I was younger and, um, but you know, it's a different time and, and, and my, and family was like, who, who pays an artist? Who's going to make money off of, off of doing art? So she, she still did it, but she found a way to still make a career of, of being mm -hmm. art artistic. So uh, when I started dancing really late into my, uh, really late into my life in terms of dance years, Mm -hmm. um she all she always told me she was like i always wanted to be a dancer i always wanted to be a modern dancer and i never got the chance to it she's like i feel like i'm getting the chance through you and i was like ah waterworks stop <laughs> i don't cry i don't cry um so it was one of those things uh to where i i i don't think i've ever actually said that out loud like you said like who do i dance so i don't think i've even actually ever thought about it but i, I I think the first person I, I dance for is my mom. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I dance for, I dance for my mom. I, and I, I definitely, um, I dance for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and this can be in any form or fashion, performance or just in class. I, dan I dance for myself. It's, it's, it's my, one of my forms of self-care yeah um, is 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 to is to move and it's it's such a gift i i i'm privileged to be a dancer because it's just i can express myself without having to use words when i don't have words i can express myself that way um oh my gosh i i i dance for black men yeah. i dance for black men who have always wanted to dance um to me this question is hard <laughs> How much time do we have? Because I mean, I have answers. Oh, I want to hear them. Cause I, oh my goodness, I think people need to hear this. You know? Yeah, I, just, I, I don't know. There's, this is, there's so many, so many people, groups of people that I dance for. I dance for black people. I dance for black men. I dance for mm -hmm. um, gay black men. I dance for so many, so many. Oh, I dance for my family. I dance for my sister. Mm -hmm. Um, who has always, always supported me. Um, I dance for my father. He's, he's deceased. Um, and I've always dreamed of him seeing me dance. Um, yeah, wow, there's, there's so many. I, oh, I dance, for, I dance for my mentors. I would be nothing without them. <laughs> I would be, I would be navigating this world so confused if, they hadn't, if I would have like stumbled into the arts somehow, the arts would have found me. But like, if I hadn't had the people who really saw something in me, yeah. Um, oh, I did. Yeah, I, I dance for them. I, I dance. I teach for them because I wouldn't be there without them. I, I think about them. I all, all my students now knows my mentor Heather Samuelson from. Uh, from Texas, where I went to school, Stephen F. Austin State University. Everyone knows, they might not know her name, but they know a lot of her sayings because I say them. <laughs> you know, uh, or my other my mentor, Helene J. Wilkins, who um, is here in Colorado, who is um, a really close mentor of mine. Um, they, 
they know a lot of his concepts as well. I, I, I um, use a lot of his material, abstract some of his material when I teach class. I'm like, okay, this is from my mentor. So like, I dance for them. Oh, I dance for my ballet teacher, Katie Parr, um, mm-hmm. who taught me how to tondu. <laughs> because, <laughs> oh, like, I, 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 I dance for so, so many people I can't even name. Um, yeah, I think it's just like a litany of people. I, I want to I write that down. Yes. Wanna, that, that should be a prompt. That should be a prompt to just yes. like, dance for. Because like the list is endless. Yeah, the list is endless. I like that you, you say too. Uh, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, that makes me really happy. And um, I like that you say too that you have the you have the privilege of um, expressing through dance. And I um, uh, in my MFA program, I read some Edouard Glissant, and Glissant talks about diasporic communities, um, especially in the uh, Car- Caribbean. I believe um, I didn't get to read the whole book, but there were parts of it that I read. And he he asked this question like how how do we express ourselves when we don't have words to express ourselves? Because as black and POC folks, um, as people, like any, anyone who's, uh, you know, other than the actual norm, but um, I'll just take it to the, like, just being black folks and diasporic folks, like um, there have been so many times, even to, up until now, um, in, in present day where our language has been taken away and our um, ways of expression, um, often music and um, uh, the ways that we celebrate and um, uh, talk to spirit, etc. cetera. And um, uh, Glissant talks about like when the words and everything are taken away, what do you have left? And you, you, you have the body. And so there's yeah. like dancing and making sounds with, with the body. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, the ways those things have been taken away too, as like, um, you know, bodies become commodified and, um, uh, there, there are certain performative ways in which we're supposed to express. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, um, I think about that a lot, especially, especially as I'm becoming an auntie, um, (laughs) like just, um, like the inhibitions I felt in my body that have prohibited me from movement just from movement Mm. um and um i'm wondering i i have this poem i read sometimes called dambala and it's like a um, african healing dance i learned um in my living room from a vhs tape (laughs) um and it's kind of a joke but it's also um very real too because there's like all these degrees of separation and then i finally got it back by buying this vhs tape um and learning like kind of a piece possibly from from my history um and Mm. it has to do with movement um and 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 bringing everyone every everyone into it and so i don't know what i'm trying to get at um uh maybe some kind of universality or something or or maybe some kind of i mean because you're a teacher now and now you're leading other people into it i'm just wondering if other people follow along like you know the layman folk people who aren't in the world of dance um i don't know that's probably a selfish question honestly (laughs) Wait, 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 say one more time for me. Like, well, I, like, what, like, I guess, what, um, do you have ideas or words for people who think that they can't dance, I guess? Oh. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I tell everyone that um, I think everyone is a dancer mm-hmm. because in a lot of ways I, I can think of everything as being a dance. Yeah. Um, or... Um, as I'm explaining to my class, that everything can be a performance if it has intention. Um, us talking in the way in which I'm moving my hands is yeah. is performance. It, it, it's a, it's performative. A, a lot of things that we we don't see as performance or that can be performance or dance is. Um, so so when people say, "Oh, I'm not a dancer," I'm like you have a body. You're able to to use or move your body in some way you're a dancer, yeah? Um, and I, I think in, in a lot of ways that pe- people think like dancing is all the big, huge things that we can do, but I, I was uh, teaching my class about like movement and, and um, just simple things that you can do to create a, a little mini dance. Mm-hmm. And I had them think of like five um, tasks or five mini tasks or gestures that they do every single day. 
that could be like drinking from, from you know, a cup or fixing their hair, brushing their teeth, uh, fixing their shirt. And then I said, okay, now string those things together and, and string those things together and repeat them. So like one, you know, and then, I, then, you, yeah. then you continue doing that. I'm like, okay, so now look at you, you're all dancing. So, so it was one of those things where like, like that, um, trying to, trying to kind of dis dismantle people's idea of what dance is. There is like formal training. Yes. The formal, you know, we, we have like formal training or, or, um, or training in general, but in terms of the ability to dance, I feel like dance can be and is everything. It's in yeah. everything. Um, dance is in nature and things of that nature. So, so like, and, and, and people can understand, like, or they see that, like, waves moving and the trees blowing in the wind, like, and they can see and understand that as dance. So then why can people say, like, oh, I'm not a dancer. Look, nature is dancing, you know? So, like, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm rambling, but I really do believe that everyone is a dancer. Um, and I think it's great to find different ways in which to move your body. Um, yeah. And I mean, you're you talking about, you know, the, the little mini, mini thing that you do and things that interest. So I think it's, it's important. It's important to just do little mini things um, and move your body. And I can even see you rolling your shoulders, you know, or rolling your head and your neck. Just, just different things just to keep your, your body moving. Um, I think it could be really beneficial to a lot of people. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, but what about your students? Like... You talked about them a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to teach in, in terms of like teaching them in terms of dance. And yeah, so um, my, my non-dancing students, I'm, I'm, you know, working with them on understanding um, their bodies and understanding what bodies can do and understanding that bodies can be performative, but mm -hmm. not in a, in a way that I see performance as a dancer or somebody else see a performance as like a thespian or something of that nature. So finding ways in which to move and use the body um, in performance, in conversation with that technology and things of that nature. Um, and, and, and just kind of breaking down the walls in terms of, Oh, I'm, I'm not a, not a dancer, I'm not a mover. I just, you know, sit behind the camera and things of that nature. So um, really trying to dismantle that idea and, and, and get them to move their bodies, but always emphasizing, emphasizing that I'm not asking them to dance. Cause they're like, doesn't it have to be a dance? I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be a dance. Um, and for my, and from, for my dancing students, I feel like, um, I don't know. I don't know, I, I feel like as I continue to figure out myself as a dancer, figure out um, myself as a, as a teacher, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to impart that into them. And I'm not even really sure what that is. Um, but what, one of the things I would say in terms of, I think, I think you said in terms of like things that I'm learning and things that I'm imparting into my students mm -hmm. um, is at least trying to impart to all my students dancing and non-dancing that um, they can do whatever they put their mind to. I think that's something super important. I'm not, it's not really anything super big and philosophical, but honestly, if you, you, you can do anything you put your mind to. So in terms of my dance students and I present them with, with, a, with a task or a sense of choreo a certain piece of choreography that they don't think they, they can do or mm -hmm. execute, working through that and uh, working through that, working through that self-consciousness and that doubt and understanding that, that, that you can't accomplish that. And then when I think about my non-dancing students at, uh, in my other classes, I'm looking at it in a sense of um, unlocking their, their creativity and, and shifting their perspective on what one thing is. I've been saying the same thing to them. It's like, you can, you can do it if you really put your mind to it. It's a different way of working. It's a different way of, um, creating um and that was something that i think i struggle with and, and continue to struggle with um as um a choreographer as a teacher like coming out getting out of my head and getting out of my own self-doubt so i think that's one of the things that i'm working on that i think i'm imparting into my students and it's not necessarily um a movement or dance offering but i feel like it's a it's a yeah intimate offering uh, it's the right word, but like a 
internal offering that, that I'm learning to work through that I think that could really help them in the different aspects of their life, whether it be dance, whether it be, you know, creating or different things of that nature. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit too about um, um, the multimedia aspect of your performances. Um, has that always been that way? Um, and um, when did it start? No, I don't know. What did, you yeah, about? Um, so it has it. It definitely has not been. So when I started um, graduate school, I, I didn't really, I didn't really have a sense of direction. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was making work and things, things of that nature, but I wasn't, I didn't really have a sense of direction or really know myself as a choreographer or know the, the different possibilities and, and using um, different skills and um, things in my work. So mm -hmm. I was just strictly like, um, doing that um and i i don't know i just had an interest of always using technology in my work i always wanted to use technology in my work in some way and figuring out the way in which to do it without it feeling or looking gimmicky to me um mm -hmm. or looking like a unintentional backdrop okay. um, I feel unintentional because sometimes it, it really is just a backdrop like i've done work where it's just a backdrop but um using it where it's an unintentional backdrop um, but, but I didn't really know how to do that. I didn't really know how to get into it. Um, and um, I believe this was fall of 17, I believe. Um, CU, Boulder, CU Boulder, the dance theater dance program always hold, um, holds like a little, um, I won't call it a conference, but it's called Unwrap. And I forgot what the, what the letters, um, the acronym stands for. But it's like a, a, each year there's like a different theme or a different faculty member who heads it. And they'll, you know, bring in their... Um, It'll, they're bringing their colleagues and things to talk and to present work and different things of that of that nature. So um, I said all that to say, um, my one of my mentors that I met at CU, Tara Knight, she presented um, about about uh, technology and dance and technology because this um, this unwrap was I believe partnered with the San Susi Film Festival. I think it was about screen dance. I think this, the theme for this one was screen dance. So she was. Um, doing a presentation about using the screen, using different forms of technology um, in, in conversation with dance. So she showed this uh, video um, where they were using like um, motion sensing technology. And I feel, I feel like um, this motion sensing technology and um, body heat technology. So the technology would change depending on where you were on stage mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So, and she mentioned, she's like, oh, I'm, I'll be teaching something like this next uh, next semester. We'll um, we'll probably learn how to do this the first day of, of class. And I was like, sold. <laughs> I, I was like, whatever you need me to do, I am there. So I ended up taking this class, which funny enough is the class I'm now teaching at CU. Um, <laughs> so I, full circle, I don't know, luck, probably a little bit. Um, but I took that class and I think that was the thing that kind of pushed me over the edge choreographically. It started to make me look at my work differently. Um, and it started, it pulled in my skills because I, I received my BFA degree in radio television, okay. um, not even in dance. So I received it in radio television, but a lot of my experience was a, um, during the, in that program was creating video packages, creating news packages. So I, I had a lot of chops, at least I felt I had a lot of chops editing. So I was like, oh, I can create my own content. So mm -hmm. while I was in this class, we, we were doing a lot of uh, different projects and using these mini projectors. And I was just finding ways in which to make my dancing looked more interesting. Um, and then I was, you know, starting my thesis work and I was like, okay, how can I use like technology to abstract the body? Cause that was one of the themes I was going for in my thesis work. So it kind of started there. Um, and then after that, I, um, I have put a lot of media into the, my work since then. Um, and right now I'm at a space where I'm kind of slowing down and, and understanding my point in using the media in conversation with the dance, how, how they can, how they can support each other is mm -hmm. one taking the front seat to the other. So um, that's really how I got into using technology. Um, mm -hmm. I just kind of lucked out and fell into it and, and just kind of hit the ground running and, and use skills that I thought were just kind of like there. I was like, Oh, I can use these skills. Yeah. Um, so, so the, most of the technology that I um, create and a lot of the media that I create, for my work, um, well, yeah, I created myself, the media I created myself, but most of the time it's found video that I just like find and clips that I find that I string together and, 
um, like really interesting. But that's how I got into it. And now I've, um, it's become a really um, important part of my work, a, lot, a very important part of my process yeah. as well as, um, as a choreographer, so, you know, understanding what comes first. So sometimes it's the dancing that comes first and then the media is, is secondary. So the media is first and then the dancing comes secondary. So that's kind of how I work with both of them. Thank you for sharing all that. That's really cool. Cause yeah, I've noticed that um, your the 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 performances that I saw, the media was used very purposefully. Um, and I think this this year and last year, I think that was like the first time I've ever seen that happening um, in that way. Um, unless it was like you know like a big Broadway musical or something. Right, like, yeah, I've yeah. Seen, but like. Um, it's just it's just really effective and again it just reminds me of like there are lots of things that are very difficult to express in words um and there are all these other ways of uh expression and so yeah. like hitting the senses in different ways it just like i don't know it's I, I, people get mad at me when i say it's a certain kind of magic but it kind of feels like it you know mm -hmm. like how how do you get through all these freaking hard heads i don't know dance in multimedia and then see what happens, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. Are there some things you'd like to add or leave us with? Um, add, um, keep going, keep creating. I think that's one of the things that has um, helped me, um, and especially helped with, um, we, we didn't touch on mental health a little bit, but it has really touched um, and helped me in terms of, of my mental health. It was just kind of yeah. keep creating. My, all Everybody in um, in the house is an artist. So I have, uh, two roommates, two of my really good friends, and all of us are artists. All of us are dancers. So we're, you know, we're um, now using our art to, to make a statement, but also to heal, yeah. um, as I talked about earlier. So um it's hard. It's, it is, it is difficult. This is probably the hardest thing that anyone has lived through. I, I'm not sure, I, you know, but it's, it's one of, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's a, every day is different and every day is a battle, but um, I've, yeah, just the, I mean, the most I can say is, is keep going. I think I'm at a loss of words, but it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot to, um, take it's a lot to to look at it's a lot to experience um but that you know there's a sense of resilience there's a sense of like you know keep going keep trucking along so yeah. i guess that that's what i could leave everyone with is the is the keep going awesome thank yeah. you and how can people um keep tabs on your work or viscosities um how can they support um your work and um whatever you're doing like yes um so um i can i can send you the uh, viscosity website but we are um I'm on instagram so viscosity um dance Co dance collective um on instagram um, i'm also on instagram what did keith see um so um i i post um my dancing and i'll all the shows and things that we, we will be doing here in the next month or so you can find all of that um, on my Instagram, on the Viscosity Instagram, okay. um, yeah, that's 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 the, the honestly the best ways to uh, to keep up with me is be via Instagram. Um, we'll post everything there. We we'll post rehearsal videos and um, improv videos, things of that nature. So if you want to follow um, us, the company, uh, me, and my work, you can do so at those two uh, Instagram pages. Awesome! Thank you so much for Thank your time. You. I'm going to go ahead and close this up.